Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast is your one-stop shop for fantasy football news and advice. You can't decide on who to draft on the first round. Going gaga on how to line up your team. Got you covered. Traditional league, dynasty league, PTR league, IDP league, IDP league, even daily fantasy football league. Join us as we break down all the questions of fantasy football. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast is your one-stop shop for fantasy football news and advice. You can't decide on who to draft on the first round? Going gaga on how to line up your team. We've got you covered. Traditional league, dynasty league, PPR league, IDP league, IDP league, even daily fantasy football league. Join us as we break down all the questions of fantasy football. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football. Ball Podcast. What is up, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast brought to you by the one and only GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host. On Thursdays and Sundays, Grady Duggan, and I really appreciate you guys giving today a listen. We have a wonderful show planned for you guys today. If you listen to Sunday's episode, I went in-depth and talked a lot about the NFC Conference. I went down each division and I went and talked about what players on each team I think are going to hold fantasy football value and will help you take your fantasy football team to the next level. And now today is part two of that kind of trilogy or episode. I guess trilogy isn't exactly the right term to use because that is for groups of three. But Sunday was the NFC conference and today is going to be the AFC conference. And there is a lot of good teams to discuss. The NFC is definitely a little bit more stacked on the side of teams, but the AFC has some big time star power, as you can obviously already imagine in the Lamar Jackson, the Patrick Mahomes, all those guys. So this is an exciting episode that I can't wait to get into. Just a little different type of thing to unpack As we get into this episode, I don't know if you guys are paying attention, but it's been interesting to see a lot of surprising players are starting to opt out of this season due to the coronavirus. I can't blame them. You know, there's a lot of risk that goes on with trying to play during a global pandemic that has seen new heights in our country. But and a lot of these guys have families or have other health conditions. So. Like I said, you really can't blame him. But, I mean, Marquise Goodwin, a really good receiver for the Eagles. Damian Williams, the Chiefs starting running back. So it's one thing to pay attention to because as certain guys drop out, it's going to raise other guys' fantasy football value. So very interesting topic to unpack. So that's one thing to pay attention to. I'll dive more into that in a later episode once we get closer to the season and it's more clear who is opting out and who is going to be taking their place on their depth chart of whatever team people are opting out on. But let's get into the divisions. I'm going to start in the AFC East, a very, very interesting division to talk about. Really, you know, Tom Brady leaves. It's the first year in gosh knows how long that it, you really are looking at the, this division and saying, oh, the Patriots are going to win this. It's the first time in a long time that it is not a foregone conclusion that the Patriots will be the AFC East champions. But let's start off with the Miami Dolphins. This is a strange team to be looking at. I don't think they're anywhere near being a playoff team, but they have some fantasy football 
value. They have some guys who could produce a little bit for you. Nothing crazy, but some solid middle to late round guys. So as we take a look at the Miami Dolphins roster, we will obviously start with the quarterback position because it is the one that has the most question marks around it. Now you have Ryan Fitzpatrick and right off the bat, I'm going to tell you, I would not draft him. And I think that goes for most people. And it's not that he can't be productive. He's had some solid years in the NFL. He's had some stretches where he puts up great numbers. Sometimes it doesn't last that long. And he can be a solid kind of stream guy, you know, if you have a quarterback on a bye and you need someone to start for a week or two or something happens, you know, he's not a bad option to have on kind of keep an eye on for the waiver wire. But what makes this such an interesting situation this year is they just drafted Tua Tagovailoa. And I think Tua Tagovailoa could be a great quarterback in the NFL. And I do think eventually in this season we see him get some action, whether it's because he Fitzpatrick isn't playing well, gets hurt, maybe goes out with COVID. There's a lot of things that plays into it. Also just wanting to get your rookie reps. But with no preseason games, a very interesting training camp, no offseason program, it's hard to see – the rookie out of Alabama really playing at all the first few weeks of the NFL season. They're going to want to see, have him kind of adapt, get used to some stuff in playoffs or in practice. I'm sorry, not playoffs, learn the playbook. So I would be more intrigued to see Tua Tagovailoa in fantasy football, but I would be surprised if we see him in the first, maybe quarter or first half of the season. So I would steer away from the Miami Dolphins quarterbacks, but they have some interesting options in their running back room with Jordan Howard and Matt Breda from the San Francisco 49ers. And Jordan Howard, I believe, used to be on the Bears. Jordan Howard is a good three down kind of pound it back. So that is a good option. And I think Matt Breda is going to be a nice third down option for the Miami Dolphins. I would see a little bit more value in Matt Breda just because I don't think Jordan Howard is going to be putting up running back one or running back two numbers, but Matt Breida has the opportunity to be a nice flex position. He has speed that he can burn any defense at any point in the game. He really has the ability to take it to that next level anytime he touches the ball. So I would expect Brian Flores and his offensive coordinator to really look for Matt Breida to be that kind of playmaker. So if you need a guy like that, really look for him to be that guy. Now, if we move it on over to the wide receiver position, this is the position that interests me even more in the Miami Dolphins. They have Devontae Parker and Preston Williams, who I think are both great options. Devontae Parker could be a solid wide receiver too, someone who I would look for in kind of the fifth to maybe seventh or eighth round range. You know, he's a very, very kind of consistent receiver, and he's only been getting better the past year or two. He started off a little slow in his NFL career, but has really picked it up the last year or two. He had over 1,200 yards last year with nine touchdowns, so I expect him to continue to take that next step every single year and keep improving. So Devontae Parker is one who I would keep an eye out for. And then Preston Williams is a young receiver who is a – Second year guy out of Tennessee, he's a 6'5 body, so really can go up and get that contested catch, a really good red zone threat for the Miami Dolphins. So expect him to be a big part of this offense. And another person I forgot that the Dolphins had when I was just looking at until I was looking at my notes is Alan Hearns from the Jacksonville Jaguars, who at one point was one of the top maybe 10 to 12 receivers in the league. He's had a great career, but he's kind of been battling injuries before, hasn't really produced. So if he can stay healthy and get on that field, that is another person. And now He's not someone I would draft, but someone who if you need someone as a buy someone as a bye week and you need a player or you need a flex position, Alan Hearns is a good person to just monitor, see how his season's going. Because obviously you get a couple weeks in, and if it's not going well, you're not gonna want to stream him. But it is something to pay close attention to. Then you go to the tight end position with Mike Jazeki, who really came on late as of last season and played really well for the Dolphins out of Penn State, second or third year guy, I forget which, very young. 
young guy, a lot of upside, and I think will continue to get better. So if you can get him in probably the later rounds, he's not going to be a high value guy. Expect him to be a really good value pick for your tight end position. So that's kind of my wrap up with the Miami Dolphins. Nothing to kind of get in the first five rounds or really brag to home about, but some solid options in the later rounds. Now, as we move it forward in the AFC East with the New York Jets, I think Sam Darnold could have a good year as long as Adam Gase uses him correctly. Sam Darnold has a good chance to be a good, productive quarterback in this league. It's just going to be a matter of whether his offense can produce around him. They have Le'Veon Bell, who obviously is one of the better running backs in the NFL. We're not going to see what we saw in Pittsburgh out of him, but could still be a very, very productive running back for the New York Jets. And I think if you get him in the rounds four to six, you have a very solid chance to have a running back one, maybe running back two in your running back slot. So really good guy to have there. Now, if they also picked up Frank Gore, who is just an absolute tank, I don't know if he will ever retire. And he's someone that is very dependent and, I would expect him to have some fantasy football value, even if it is behind Le'Veon Bell, because Frank Gore is someone who just, he gets yards no matter when he touches the ball, and he is an absolute grinder. So he always, it's one of those guys that when you have him on your team, when you have him on a team like the New York Jets, you can't keep him off the field. So expect him to see some time and produce kind of be a good flex guy for teams. Now, the wide receiver position, a lot of people were expecting them to address the wide receiver position in the first round this year in the NFL draft, but they went left tackle with Mecky Becton out of Louisville, which can't blame him. You want to really protect your quarterback, in, especially with a young franchise guy like Sam Darnold. But if you look at their wide receiver room, Rashard Perriman, Jameson Crowder, and Denzel Mims. So there's not much to really talk about here. I wouldn't be too high on any of these guys. No, not worth a draft pick in the first 10 rounds for me. Maybe if you're filling up your bench and you just need a guy who you can maybe stream for a week or two, yeah, pick one of these guys. But don't expect to have huge production out of them. Aside from Le'Veon Bell, I think the top fantasy football product kind of production people for the New York Jets is going to be Chris Herndon of the tight end position. He had a couple really good games last year before getting hurt. So I would expect him to still be that guy. Now, as we move it up, I kind of like to go least to worst, or I mean worst to best offense or kind of where I think the division is going to end. So in second place, I am going to go with the New England Patriots for the AFC East. Really an interesting team. I think the defense is going to carry them for a while in this season. I don't really know how much they have on offense, but let's get into their offensive weapon. And obviously you're going to start at the quarterback position right away with this team, which is a very interesting and dynamic position to look at. And in my personal opinion, I think it would be foolish of them to not go with Cam Newton right out of the gate. But there is an argument for them to start Jared Stidham as well. So see, with Jared Stidham, the Patriots seem very high on him. There's people in that building who seem to think, or there's reports from people that have talked to people with inside that building who seem to think and are under the belief that Jared Stidham will be their number one guy for the future. But after signing Cam Newton to a one-year deal, it makes you wonder where they're going to go with this position right off the bat. And obviously there's an the argument that there's no preseason, kind of no training camp like we talked about with Tua Tagovailoa, that Cam Newton doesn't have the normal reps and the normal time to get this offense under his wing and really understand it. So Jared Stidham, who's been in this offense for a while and understands the concepts, could come in here and function at a high rate right off the bat. The thing is, is Cam Newton gives you such an upside. I think Bill Belichick getting his hands on Cam Newton right away – puts Cam Newton in the top 10 to 12 quarterbacks in the NFL as long as he's healthy, which all reports are is that he is healthy. So I think Cam Newton is going to be the starter right away. And I personally think that he will probably be a very productive fantasy football quarterback. And that is one I am high on. The thing is, is I don't, he doesn't have very many proven weapons. Doesn't mean he 
isn't going to produce with them because Tom Brady had an okay fantasy football season last year with pretty much a, the same team. But you look at the running back room, Sony Michelle is going to be their most dynamic and best offensive player in terms of fantasy football. He's a three down back. He can really help you out of the backfield in the passing game too. So I've harped on points per reception being such a big deal in fantasy football. If you are in a PPR league, Sonny Michelle is a great option because he's going to be a, the top running back. He's going to get a lot of carries each game. And then he is also going to kind of be a pass threat out of the backfield. One interesting guy to take a look at in this New England Patriots offense is Nikhil Harry, second year guy to Arizona State. Battled some injuries last year. So wasn't really able to have that full development in his rookie season. But he's been working out in the offseason with Cam Newton. So he's going to have that chemistry and kind of formed relationship with him already and I think that is going to be a huge help as Nikhil Harry looks to make that big step from his first to second year and now this is a guy who I think you could probably steal in kind of the six to eight or nine round range depending on how people in your league value receivers so if you can get him in kind of the mid to late range he is someone who has a chance to be very very productive I think he could have a big breakout year and kind of come into that number one receiver that the Patriots drafted him for. So tight end is also a position that Bill Belichick loves to use, but they're kind of a big toss up. They have Matt Lacoste and Devin Asai, the rookie out of UCLA. So neither of them are worth drafting. Maybe a couple picks or a couple weeks into the season. If someone's really starting to produce fantasy football points, that would be worth it. But other than that, I would not really pick anyone besides for Cam Newton, Sony Michelle, and Nikhil Harry. But now as we round out the AFC East, a new division winner in my eyes, and I think the Buffalo Bills are going to take this. It's not going to be an easy division win as the Patriots will do have a top three defense in the NFL, but I think the Buffalo Bills have a top six defense. I mean, there's not a lot of defenses that are better than them. And then a very dynamic offense with a lot of playmakers and a lot of guys who could benefit your fantasy football team. I mean, Josh Allen, right off the gate, I've talked about him before. He has a absolute cannon for an arm, one of the strongest arms in the NFL and really smart decision maker. Doesn't throw too many picks. He's gotten more and more comfortable as each year as goes by in his NFL career. So I expect Josh Allen to be a very productive fantasy football quarterback. One thing that people don't really take into consideration with Josh Allen is that he also is a threat with his legs. He can kill teams with his legs. He can kind of move around in the pocket and scramble for those kind of extra yards when the pocket isn't is collapsing or maybe no one is open. So expect Josh Allen to be a fairly productive NFL and fantasy football quarterback. And now as we move it to the running back position, this is someone I have talked about in multiple episodes, and that's Devin Singletary, who out of, as his rookie year, he was kind of the second stringer behind Frank Gore last year, the third down back, and he still had a very productive rookie season. But now Frank Gore in New York as a Jet, Devin Singletary is really pushed into that starting position, and I think he is going to take off. He's kind of a smaller scat back type guy, and like I've talked about with pass running backs. He also gives you a huge dynamic out of the backfield in the passing game. And that's one thing the Buffalo Bills like to extort in the red zone. So I think Devin Singletary could be a huge touchdown machine. But where this team really improved in the offseason was trading for Vikings wide receiver. Now, obviously, Buffalo Bills is Stephon Diggs, one of the best receivers in the NFL and a very good deep threat. Now gets to team up with Josh Allen, who has one of the strongest arms in the NFL. So expect that combo to be huge for the Buffalo Bills. Stephon Diggs, I think, is going to be potentially have one of the best years of his career now in an offense that really is going to have him as the number one guy. You know, Adam Thielen in Minnesota took a lot of receptions from him. I mean, the Buffalo Bills still have some talented receivers in John Brown and Cole Beasley, and both of those guys could be great value picks in kind of the 7 to 10 round range and really produce for teams. So really all three of these guys are worth a fantasy football pick. Stefan Diggs is probably going to go in the first three to five rounds and well worth it. He is worth that high of a pick. They also have Dawson Knox, a tight end who really came on last year as a very productive 
tight end towards the end of the season. This is going to be his second year out of Ole Miss, and he really only got better as the season progressed. So expect him to also take another leap. There's just a lot of potential in this Buffalo Bills offense. So watch for them as they will, in my eyes, win the AFC East. So that's the AFC East roundup. You got the Bills, the New England Patriots, the New York Jets, and the Miami Dolphins. A lot of fairly solid fantasy football producers, not as much as some divisions, but a lot of good players to watch out for. Now, as we move it forward, stick around after the break. We are going to be going into the AFC North. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Folks, welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. And now as we get into the next part of our episode, we are going to be taking a look at the AFC North, one of the more intriguing NFL football divisions this year. So let's get right to it. First up, in the last place spot, easy pick right here, we're going to go with the Cincinnati Bengals and I mean, they're throwing out Joe Burrow really into the fire, let's be honest. No off-season program, no training camp. or No, no there's a training camp, no preseason. You're going to start your number one overall draft pick. That is a lot of pressure. But, hey, if he balls out and he does his thing, that is going to be a very bright future in Cincinnati for the Ohio native. But since there's not much to say there with their quarterback position, I wouldn't use Joe Burrow on a draft pick. Maybe if you kind of keep an eye on him a couple weeks into the season, you can get some value out of him if a streamer or as a backup if you really want to run the gauntlet and hope that he performs right away for that number one from that number one draft pick in the 2020 NFL draft. But moving right along, they do have one of the better running backs in the NFL, and that is Joe Mixon. He has put up big numbers when he gets the opportunity to I mean really he's going to be a first to second round pick because he's going to be the focal point of that offense last year he ran for just under 1200 yards so he's going to produce for you when he's healthy and he's really a dynamic kind of power back not the same power back that you see all the time he's kind of elusive and has the speed dude he likes to jump outside and get to the sideline so really an interesting running back case they also have Javon Giovanni Bernard who is a really big third down back, not big as in size. He's kind of a smaller guy, but a huge big time third down back really likes to use the passing game out of this back. If you are in a PPR league, Jenny Bernard has been a great flex guy for years. So keep an eye on that. If you're kind of in the later rounds of the draft and want someone who you're just take kind of taking a flyer on Giovanni Bernard is a great option now with their wide receiver room I think AJ Green you will get some production out of him he's not going to be that top wide receiver that you once knew if you have him in the five to eight round range yeah take him because he's going to be their number one guy in the passing game and he's going to be somewhat productive who knows how he's going to be coming out of this injury from last year but an interesting case to keep an eye on as well 
is T. Higgins. T. Higgins now is a rookie coming out of Clemson and very interesting case. 6'4", big body. He's young. That's the only thing is how much is he going to be able to adapt and play well out of the gates. But he has the opportunity. Very athletic, very quick, breaking away from his defender in the college football scene. So a very interesting offense. You know, not a lot of big – they have big star names, but not that – names that aren't quite there yet. So a very interesting case. Some guys – I wouldn't look to draft these guys, but they're people who you can keep an eye on for. If you get them in the right value, they're worth it. Or if you keep an eye on in the waiver wire and you need a guy, yeah, they're going to be solid picks. But just got to know where to draft these guys. So as we move it on down in the AFC North, the Pittsburgh Steelers, which I think their whole offense in the – the offense as a whole is going to have a very big bounce back year from last year. I mean, when you have Mason Rudolph and Devlin Hodges starting most of the season for you, you can only expect so much out of your skill position guys, but they get big Ben back from an elbow injury. And I think he's going to pick up right where he left off and have this team. Not, I don't think they're going to be some fantastic top five offense, but they're going to be productive and he's going to keep this team competitive as will Mike Tomlin at the helm. So Big Ben's got James Conner, who when can he can stay healthy is one of a very competitive and kind of bruising back a third down, a three back guy. He can be a first, second, and third down guy, but they also have Jalen Samuels, who's kind of smaller, faster guy, likes to bounce it outside. Jalen Samuels can be kind of a later round pick. Another guy who really in a flex position can be very productive. So if you're looking at James Conner, probably in the first three to five rounds, he's going to be off the board. So you've got to know where to pick him. But the receiving core on this team is really where you're going to make your money. So there is a lot of good options here. And Juju Smith-Schuster had a down year last year, but the year before was a one of the best fantasy football receivers in the league. So I expect with Ben Roethlisberger healthy again, Juju Smith-Schuster get, to get back to that 2018 form. And not only did he put up big numbers in yards, he's a reception machine. That number one guy, he's going to get targets. And he's a chance to put up 8 to 10 receptions a game. And that right there, that's 10 points and on top of yards. And if he scores, he's going to be putting up a lot of points this year. So Juju Smith-Schuster is worth a second to third round pick in the fantasy football drafts in my eyes. They have two other receivers that I've talked about in prior episodes, and that's James Washington and Deontay Johnson. And both of these guys, you can make a case that are kind of sleepers that could have huge seasons and come on and be very productive wide receiver two. James Washington out of Oklahoma State, a complete vertical threat. And we know Big Ben has a big arm, likes to stretch the field. So James Washington could really be big for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And now Deontay Johnson is a very shifty, small slot receiver. So uh, someone, a position that Ben Roethlisberger is going to like to find and find often. So another, he's, I think Deontay Johnson will end up with more receptions than James Washington, but yardage might be a little different just because James Washington, Deontay Johnson, is going to be that slants and quick routes, kind of outs, maybe slants up the middle or posts up the middle. A lot of options for production with both of those guys, kind of in the seven to eight round range. Then as you move forward to the tight end position in this division, they have Eric Ebron and Vance McDonald. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two split, especially when Vance McDonald was productive for the Pittsburgh Steelers last year. But Eric Ebron has been a veteran tight end in the NFL for a while now. And I think Eric Ebron will get most of the reps and for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I think Ebron, you know, he's not going to be a top six to seven tight end, but later he could be one of those guys that's kind of a sleeper that you could get some good wider or tight end two or three value out of him, maybe in the eight to 10 round range. So a lot of good guys to keep an eye on for in the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. Now, as we move it on to the second or the third team, I'm going to talk about who I think will end up in second place in the AFC North a very controversial team to talk about, let's be honest, and that is the Cleveland Browns. And there's no real secret as to why this team has been a little bit of controversy in a, 
I mean, first off, they've been one of the worst teams for a long, long time. But now they finally have the talent to be good and the talent to put up a winning record. Uh, John Dorsey, the GM, has put together quite the roster. And kind of the the coaching has the coaching carousel goes through this place like it is its job. So now they get Kevin Stefanski, a very good offensive coordinator. And I think that is going to match up well for the young Baker Mayfield. And I have predicted in past episodes, I think Baker Mayfield is going to have a bounce back year. You're going to see that second half of his rookie season type Baker Mayfield. I think he kind of. It humbled him last year. He kind of was the hot shot going out of his rookie season, and then he was really humbled by the NFL, and I think he's been quiet this offseason, working hard. I think Baker Mayfield is going to be a huge contributor. Expect him to put up three to 4,000 yards passing with a very talented offense around him. Then you look at Nick Chubb, who's really a first-round fantasy football draft pick, let's be honest. He's going to be one of the top five running backs in the league in my eyes. He is very good. They like to pound the ball. This is a this is going to be a play action pass type offense. So they're going to want to establish the run often and early to get this offense functioning. And Nick Chubb is quite the running back to do that. Even in a with a mediocre team last year, Nick Chubb was productive. And one thing the Browns did this year was focused on beefing up that offensive line, which is going to be huge for Baker Mayfield and Nick Chubb. I think it'll benefit both of them in ways that they can't even imagine yet. So Nick Chubb is going to be a 1,000 to 1,200-yard rusher at the minimum, I think. This is going to be an offense that wants to run the ball down your throat. So expect Nick Chubb to have a huge year. And when the running back has a huge year, that's going to benefit Baker Mayfield, especially in this play-action pass, Kevin Stefanski offense. Then one of the more star-studded wide receiver cores in the NFL. I mean, Rashad Higgins is a great receiver. Then you have Odo Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry. And the thing with this is I think Baker Mayfield is going to spread it around more than he usually does. He's going to know he can't lock onto one guy and pick him. So each person is going to get their reception. So let's start with Jarvis Landry just because he is going to be the consistent kind of ball hawk. He can be has one of some of the best hands in the NFL. So he's going to come down with just about every pass that's thrown his way. And he is a reception machine. He gets all the targets. And he's not going to blow you away with his speed or break away from defenders, but he is a crisp route runner who can find ways to get open. And that's what Baker Mayfield needs, especially under when you have Odell Beckham Jr. going over the top a lot of times. You need that safety blanket in Jarvis Landry. But let's get to Odell Beckham Jr., one of the most talented receivers in the NFL. And I think he is going to have a bounce back year. He and Baker Mayfield kind of struggled last year. I think Odell was finding his way in Cleveland. So I think Odell has the opportunity to have a top five wide receiver production wise with yards, touchdowns. They're going to want to go to him. He can break away and make those big time catches and contested catches in big time moments in the game. And I think Baker Mayfield is going to look for him to do that several times down the road this season. So you really can't go wrong with either of those receivers. I would say Jervis Landry in the five to six round range, Oda Beckham Jr. in the two to four. You know, it's really going to be interesting to see where these players, where these Cleveland Browns get valued in fantasy football because there's so much upside to them. But there's also that little tick under each little asterisk next to each of their name. Picking a Cleveland Brown is a risk and it has been a risk for years. But there is more upside to the Cleveland Browns offensive firepower than ever before. Then you go to the tight end position. It's going to be interesting to see how they deploy these tight ends. They went and signed Austin Hooper from the Atlanta Falcons this year, this offseason. And he's going to be that number one guy. And he's a very productive, talented, just your generic tight end who can really produce and be that dependable tight end. 6'4", so not on the huge side for a tight end, but a Stanford grad who's really kind of turned into tight end you. Then the thing is, interesting case, they have David Njoku, who is kind of an athletic freak from Miami, drafted in 2017. And he has battled some injuries, hasn't quite played to where people thought he was right out of the gates, but he's gotten better every single year. And it's going to be interesting to see how they deploy this two tight end system. Njoku did request a trade a couple weeks ago or about a month or two ago. But it seems like the Browns hold, held Pat 
didn't budge and are saying, no, you are going to be our number two tight end and we are going to use you often. So both of those guys, because it's two of them and you kind of, it's hard to tell how they're going to balance. I wouldn't pick them in the top six to seven rounds just because who knows who's going to end up pulling ahead towards the end of the season and get those kind of targets when you need it the most but you can get value out of both of them throughout the season so if you can get them in the right position and you aren't really stressing on needing a top tight end then these guys are without a doubt very very good picks so that's the Cleveland Browns for you a lot a lot of offensive firepower in this team I mean Baker Mayfield one of the more controversial names in the NFL but has an opportunity to really bounce back from the NFL, kind of get that name back to where it was leaving his rookie year. Nick Chubb, a top four to five running back in the NFL in my eyes. And because this is such a play action pass dependent offense, they're going to need to establish the run early. So expect Nick Chubb to get all the opportunities in the world to kind of get that running game going. And one person we didn't talk about, actually, now that I look at my notes, is Kareem Hunt, big play guy. So Kareem Hunt's one, kind of take a flyer on it. And we didn't see too much how the Cleveland Browns were going to use him. So it's kind of hard to judge where he's valued. But that name, you know, huge speedster. So Kareem Hunt's an interesting case to be looking at. And then obviously we talked about Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry, two huge name guys that are going to be productive no matter the way you cut it. If you can get them in the five to six well, Jarvis Landry in the five to six run range and Odell probably two to four, you're going to be in good shape for your receiving core if you can just get one of them at least. Rashard Higgins is a name we brought up briefly. I mean, the thing with him is obviously he's not going to produce like Odell Beckham Jr. or Jarvis Landry, but because he has those two guys on his team, he's going to be left with linebackers and nickelbacks and just not guys who are equipped and safeties to cover the speed that Richard Higgins poses out of the slot. So they also, Austin Hooper, David Njoku, just, I mean, you could go on and on about this offense and the possibilities. So we, you think you could talk about this offense for a while? We're going to move it along to the final team and make our way down to the Baltimore Ravens. And I mean, I think it goes without saying with the Baltimore Ravens where this team is headed and the future for this offense because of the one and only Lamar Jackson. And I've harped in prior episodes that quarterback is a position that I do not go high. I wait, I wait, I wait as long as possible to get the value out of. But there is a but in there now. Not often, but now these past two years, Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson have put a but into that. If you can get one of those guys in the first round, do it. Now, we'll talk about Patrick Mahomes later when we get to the AFC West, but let's stay with Lamar Jackson. The thing that Lamar Jackson that is so impressive, I mean, he came into his own last year and threw for over 3,000 yards, 36 touchdowns, and only six receptions. So he is a passing quarterback, but then everyone knows how dangerous he can be on his feet. I mean, he had 1,200 yards on his feet last year. So you're getting a quarterback and pretty much a running back, which is absolutely bonkers to think about in fantasy football. So if you can get him, he's not going to be on the board for long. Lamar Jackson is one of those guys that you're going to have to use a first-round draft pick for, and it's worth it, in my opinion. It is totally worth it. But he's kind of one that has to fall into the order. Obviously, there's Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley. There's those names that just always go one, two, three, four. Lamar Jackson is going to have to fall in your order. You're going to have to get the right pick. And if you do... Be thankful because you are pretty much getting a running back and a quarterback, and then you can value your value, your team value goes up so much if you can get the production that Lamar Jackson has. Especially he passes it, he can extend pass plays on his feet, look down the field as well as run the ball. Then they run the read option. I mean, there's so many opportunities and possibilities with Lamar Jackson as your fantasy football quarterback. So there's my Lamar Jackson rant, and you'll probably hear that in just about any other fantasy football podcast that Lamar Jackson is worth the first round pick. And now we go to Mark Ingram, who has been a very productive NFL quarterback ever since being drafted out of Alabama in 2011. Last year, rushed for over a thousand yards, had 10 touchdowns. The thing with him is he is just a dependable back. He is going to get after it every single game. He's a grinder and he's a, he's a goal line back too. He's a very thick goal line back, pound it back. So 
Mark Ingram gets those t- red zone touches. Interesting guy here that they drafted this year out of Ohio State is J.K. Dobbins. Talked about him in prior episodes before. Because there's Mark Ingram in the first or kind of the top of the depth chart, I don't expect J.K. Dobbins to get a lot of carries, but he could be a potential dangerous flex position or kind of late round flyer because Harbaugh has not shied away from using multiple running backs. If you're going to produce, he's going to use you. So if J.K. Dobbins can kind of show half of what he did at Ohio State, that backfield is going to be scary good. Then you move it over to their wide receiver position, and Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown, really out of Oklahoma, just came on the scene last year and went off. Didn't have, like, crazy yardage. He he only had right under 600 yards, but seven touchdowns for a rookie. Very productive. So I think he's only going to be more comfortable in this offense, be more comfortable in the NFL, have a better relationship with Lamar Jackson, and kind of get that rhythm synced up. And I think the Baltimore Ravens is only going to take a next step forward under Lamar Jackson as he matures and kind of becomes into his leader-like quarterback. And Marquise Brown is only going to benefit from that. Then you have Willie Sneed, who... Used to be with the Saints, a veteran guy, just a dependable, dependable wide receiver. I think you could get very solid wide receiver three value out of him. Miles Boykin is another receiver that has very good potential to produce. I mean, that's the thing is all these guys, Marquise Brown is going to be a top receiver. So go for him before any of the other guys. But if you can get Miles Boykin or Willie Sneed in the later rounds, that will pay off. But you get to the tight end position for the Baltimore Ravens with Mark Andrews, who's really came in to be a top five tight end with just under 900 yards and 10 touchdowns. That's where he sets himself apart from the other tight ends is he is the one of the biggest red zone threats in the NFL. Very dependable target that Lamar Jackson likes to find often. And in John Harbaugh's offense it uses tight ends very often so mark andrews if you can get him i mean after the top kind of three kittle kelsey and gronkowski go mark andrews is going to be right there following them and you could say mark andrews might even go before gronk just because of the questions that gronk holds after not playing for a little bit but i mean the baltimore ravens offense you can't go wrong with any of them just because of how dynamic lamar jackson is you know so Marquise Brown's a threat. I would go with Lamar Jackson, Mark Ingram, and Mark Andrews as their top three guys. And those are both going to be QB1, running back one, and tight end ones in the fantasy football world. So if you get either of those guys, your team is going to be productive at that position, and you're going to be in good shape. So that's AFC North. Went over the Bengals, went over the Browns, went over the Steelers, and then finally the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Stick around after the break. We're going to be going over the AFC South. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. SMCpodcast.com for more info. back to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. I hope you guys are getting some good insight for these AFC teams with big-time fantasy football providers or value players. Now, last 
segment, we talked about the AFC North, a lot of big time names in that segment. Now we're going to be talking about the AFC South, an interesting division, not as many names, but still there's a handful of guys that are big impact players that you could get on your fantasy football team and would all be very, very productive, but not as much star power in this division to say the least you know you mean you have the Jags the Indianapolis Colts Tennessee Titans and Houston Texans so there's some solid players but I guess obviously you get one or two players with each team but the difference with these teams is there's not a lot of depth players once you get beyond their starters and maybe their top two starters you're not going to see a lot of guys who have that much fantasy football value at yet at least Right now, at least, you know, maybe halfway through the season, there's some breakout guys, you know, that's bound to happen. But for now, you're not going to see some teams like the Ravens or the Niners or the Chiefs that, I mean, obviously I just named the best three teams in the NFL, but you guys are getting what I'm saying. You know, you're not going to have those second string guys who could really bring some value to your fantasy football team in the later rounds or as a flex or stream guy. So we'll get into the teams now. First up and the fourth spot, it's the Jacksonville Jaguars. I've usually started with quarterback, but we're going to start with running back on the Jacksonville Jaguars just because it's the top guy on this team. And that's Leonard Fournette. He's the only person on this team I would use a top three round draft pick on. And even that might be questionable at this point. You know, last year the Jags had a very down year and Leonard Fournette still put up just under 1,200 yards, but only three touchdowns. It just wasn't a productive year for really anyone on the Jaguars. But Leonard Fournette is the type of guy who's going to produce when he gets the ball. And he always has the chance to put up big touchdown numbers. It's just whether this offense can really take that next step and continue to develop and be able to push the ball down the field. So if you look at their receiving core, it's surprisingly not that bad. There's not a lot of star power. But first, you got DJ Chark Jr., who really came out of his shell last year and racked up just over a thousand yards with eight touchdowns. So if you can get him in kind of the four to seven round range, DJ Chark is a big body at six four. So he can get up, get that contested catches, be in the red zone, get productive there. And the next guy who really was their number one guy on offense last year, and that's DD Westbrook. Or maybe not number one. I would put DJ Chark in front of him. But D.D. Westbrook came out of the gates really strong, had a huge start to the season, then kind of slowed down as the year developed. But still has that – he has that big play ability. He can burn you over the top. And that's exactly what quarterback Gardner Minshew likes to do. He likes to throw the ball. I mean, at at Washington State, he had – an air raid offense or throwing all the time. So he is used to being under in like under pressure in that pocket and throwing the ball. And I would expect the Jaguars might be either in competitive games or losing a lot. So they're going to depend on that passing game and passing offense to keep them in games. Interesting tight end position for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And that's Tyler Eifer and Josh Oliver, Josh Oliver, a second round guy out of San Jose state who kind of has that freak athletic body at six, five two fifty, And I think could take a huge leap in his development as an NFL athlete and NFL tight end. I think he could be a very impact player, but he just didn't get the chance to do that last year didn't play too much only had three receptions so it's kind of hard to judge him he's someone who would have to perform after four to five weeks and then make it into your fantasy football eye then they have Tyler Eifert who had some good years in Cincinnati but has kind of fallen off since can never seem to stay healthy that's his thing if he could stay healthy he was a first round pick for a reason so you know does he have that value he had in Cincinnati No, of course not. Is there games where he can produce for you? Yes, but you just got to pick and choose your battles. You know, if he's your second tight end that you just stream or, you know, if your tight end has a buy or you need a flex position guy, yeah, he's probably a good guy to be in there because he's 6'6". He can be a like a red zone threat, but he's no one that you should depend on if we're being quite honest. And now as we get to the quarterback position, I already talked a little bit about Gardner Minshew. He's an interesting case, kind of similar to Tyler Eifert in that 
if he's your backup and you need to get a quarterback in there because of a bye or an injury or sickness, then yeah, Gardner Minshew could be a solid guy for a couple weeks, maybe two or three weeks, but you do not want him as your longtime quarterback if we're being completely honest. So now that is the Jacksonville Jaguars roundup in my eyes. You know, no one too worth it. Now, this is a division that is hard to predict these next three teams. And honestly, these are three teams that are always very even. They're always right around each other, always kind of a tough battle to the end. And for the third team, or the second team I'm talking about, third place team, I think I'm going to go with the Houston Texans, which might surprise some people because they have Deshaun Watson. And obviously, Deshaun Watson is a top quarterback in this league. And they're just always the team that seems to make it to the playoffs. But there's a lot of talent on these other teams. So we're going to go with the Houston Texans right now. And we can start with Deshaun Watson. If you can get him in the round four to five range, maybe a little later because quarterbacks are falling in your draft, he's going to be the best player on this team. He is a very talented quarterback and an absolute baller. So, I mean, he threw for almost 4,000 yards last year with 26 touchdowns. So he is going to be a productive fantasy football quarterback, and you cannot go wrong with Deshaun Watson, especially he's got a good skill group around him with his wide receivers and running backs. So expect Deshaun Watson to be a productive fantasy football player, but I just don't know if this defense and this team as a whole can go up against some of these other teams. I'm very high this year on the Indianapolis Colts, which I will get into later. But as we move it on down towards the rest of the skill position guys for the Houston Texans, David Johnson coming over from Arizona at one point was the best running back in the NFL, kind of had a down year last year. Well, also a big part of that was the fact that it was an air raid offense. He's battled some injuries, but the Cardinals didn't run a lot. So it's kind of hard to give him a fair shake about last season. But I think David Johnson will fit really nicely in Bill O'Brien's system and could be a huge, huge get for the Texans. And I could be wrong about them being in third place. You know, David Johnson could be kind of that piece they've always been missing. They never had – they had Carlos Hyde who was solid, but they never had a big-time – good number one running back. And if David Johnson can produce how he did a couple years ago, the Texans might be proving me wrong. And I will gladly admit that they also have Duke Johnson as their number one, because of a nice compliment to a backfield, never going to be that three down back in my eyes, but he can be productive if you need him out of the slot or I mean, not the slot, the flex position could be a good guy to keep an eye on for. But now you get to the wide receiver core, very intriguing wide receiver core. They have some depth to be honest. Will Fuller is the number one guy. If he can stay healthy, he's a number one receiver in this league and he is going to put up big numbers, but he never can seem to stay healthy any year. He is always hurt, which is a concern for kind of fantasy football owners. And that's why he could be a top three round pick, but because he's hurt, he's going to be in the six to seven round range, if not later. So, I mean, take a flyer on him. If you don't draft him to be your number one receiver, because then you will be in trouble. I would not trust him. But if you have a receiver or two already on your roster and he's still there later in the draft, maybe not later, because he's going to go middle rounds, then yeah, it's worth it. But don't expect him to be that number one guy. For this offense, I think the number one guy is going to be Brandon Cooks. And last year with the Rams, not as good of a season, but I think Deshaun Watson is better than Jared Goff. I think the Texans are going to depend on Brandon Cooks to kind of fill the void that they're losing with DeAndre Hopkins. And obviously no one's going to fill that void. That's the best receiver in the league. They're not going to get that out of Brandon Cooks. But Brandon Cooks is a speedster. He can very good route runner who can separate from his defender. He's going to put Deshaun Watson in the right position to succeed. And I think Brandon Cooks will be that number one pass option for Deshaun Watson. Then they have Randall Cobb, which is an interesting just veteran slot guy who he's not going to blow you out of his, not going to blow your socks off with the numbers or blow it out of the water, but he could be productive. He's someone that if you take a flyer in later in the round, could be that third receiver, maybe the flex position, get him in the seven to 10 round range. But an early pick is just not worth it with Randall Cobb anymore. If it was his early days with the Packers, then maybe, yeah, but 
nothing to do too early. Now, they have four tight ends that no one really knows where they're going to go with them. Darren Fells is listed as the number one guy, but honestly, one person I'm intrigued with is their technically fourth round guy, Kahale Waring out of San Diego State, 6'5", 250, and surprisingly extremely fast and athletic. If he can stay healthy and he learns the system, I would expect Kahale Waring, maybe not to be a some star, but really surprise some people maybe be that number two guy a nice compliment to Darren Fells kind of an interesting name to watch I don't think he'll give you much fantasy football value but could be a fun name to watch so that's the Houston Texans you know obviously you got Deshaun Watson be a top guy top quarterback David Johnson is an interesting name to look out for in maybe the third to sixth round range then you got Will Fuller Randall Cobb and Brandon Cooks and Brandon Cooks would be a the main guy I would watch out for. Kenny Stills is also on this team. Can't forget him, but who knows? He's going through some arrest things that he really shouldn't be. He was arrested protesting, which is absolutely ridiculous, but that's beside the point. We're talking football-wise. Still a fantasy football value, but especially because he's such a deep threat and can kind of stretch the field and burn a defense. But that's just me. I don't know how much of a draft worthy he is. So that's the Houston Texans. Very interesting team to watch. I don't think they will... I kind of think they missed the playoffs this year with how competitive this league is and or this division is, especially with how tight these three teams always are. And that's why I'm going to move to the Tennessee Titans for the third team and second place team in this division. And we'll start it off with the number one guy, and that's Derek Henry. I mean, it kind of it makes sense why he's the number one guy. I mean, he showed you what he can do with the ball in his hand towards the end of the season. I mean, he just over. He towers over people in the NFL. 6'3", 250 pounds, rushed for 1,500 yards last year, and I expect him to do just the same. He's a first-round draft pick in fantasy football. He had 16 touchdowns in 2019. So if you can get your hands on Derrick Henry, you're in good shape, especially because this is a run-first offense. They are going to look for Derrick Henry to absolutely pound the ball every single game. He could get 30, 40 runs every single game. Now, can he hold up? For a full season with that load, that's undecided. But if you can get it, your hands on Derrick Henry, go, go, go. He's going to be a top five running back in the NFL for, I mean, probably five consecutive years. He's a very productive running back and a first round pick in fantasy football. Now you move along with the Tennessee Titans and you have AJ Brown, who's going to be the second year guy out of Ole Miss. You know, Ole Miss had a hell of a wide receiver core with he and DK Metcalf, but DK Metcalf kind of got all the draft hype from that picture of them going into the draft. But AJ Brown arguably had a more productive rookie season with over a thousand yards and eight touchdowns. And I expect him to come into his own even more so his rookie year after his rookie year. I think he could have a very productive year. Ryan Tannehill takes over the offense who once Ryan Tannehill started, he really kind of elevated the team and put them into the playoff contention. And I think Tannehill is getting more comfortable in the system. He has a better relationship or chemistry with AJ Brown now. So expect those two to be a great duo. They're going to live off Derrick Henry and kind of go with that play action pass, establish the run. And Ryan Tannehill is, he could be productive for you. If you, if you're going late, late quarterbacks who are still starters. Yeah. In the seven to 10 run range, Ryan Tannehill could be a great guy for you, but he's not, going to be some uber productive fantasy football quarterback and it kind of would scare me to have him as your main guy he's someone that if i have need a buy week and i need a streamer or something like that yeah or a backup in case someone gets hurt yeah but to have him as your number one guy i would kind of be skepticism of or kind of have some skepticism but A.J. Brown and Corey Davis is another speedster who can take the top off of a defense like it's his job, and well, it is, but those are the two main wide receivers. But then tight end with Jonu Smith, that's an interesting one because he kind of has a lot of upside. Younger guy, hasn't quite come into his own, but he has shown glimpses. And so he kind of, he's intriguing to keep an eye on for, to be honest. So that's Tennessee Titans. I think they end up in second place in this division. I don't think they have a very good fantasy football value besides for Derrick Henry. But let me get into the Indianapolis Colts because I am high 
the highest I've been on the Indianapolis Colts since they lost Andrew Luck to retirement, or as I like to call him, Andy Luck. But we're going to take a look at this offense, and Phillip Rivers, I think, finally, Phillip Rivers was plagued by some not-so-good teams a lot of the time in San Diego. He throws a lot of interceptions, but I think he has a real good chance. Finally, the, one of the best offensive lines in the league with Quentin Nelson and Anthony Costanzo, Ryan Kelly. So just a lot of guys who are going to give him the time to throw the ball. And I think he's got great options. I mean, T.Y. Hilton is a number one guy. If you can get T.Y. Hilton in kind of the four to seven run range, you're going to be in good shape. He's going to be a productive receiver. But someone who I'm very high on, I've talked about, and that's Michael Pittman Jr., um, a rookie out of the University of Southern California, 6'5", 223, a possession-like receiver, runs very crisp routes, comes hard out of his breaks, and can really kind of get that separation when you need it. So I would watch out for him to be a very productive guy. And they also have Paris Campbell, a very shifty, small, well, I mean, not so small, he's six feet, but a slot receiver who can really separate from the defenders with his speed. He can cut and just go, Paris Campbell. So three very productive running backs on the Indianapolis Colts offense. And then, I mean, T.Y. Hilton's the best one there. He, he's going to be a high draft pick. He always has been. He's one. He's not going to blow you out of the water with his name, but he's just very consistent. He's going to put up consistent numbers week in and week out. But now the running back room, that is one I want to get to with the Indianapolis Colts. And obviously Marlon Mack was there last year rushing for just over a 1,000 yards. So he has some value. But I think this is going to be a running back by committee because the main guy I want to talk to you about that I am excited about is second-round pick Jonathan Taylor out of Wisconsin. It was a Heisman Trophy candidate, rushed for over 2,000 yards in his last year, over 1,000 yards for three years, an absolute beast in Wisconsin. And I think if he gets enough opportunities to run the ball, don't be surprised if Jonathan Taylor is in that rookie of the year candidacy. So a lot of interesting names to unpack here. But the Indianapolis Colts, I think, are going to take this division. They have a great head coach in Frank Wright. And just the talent is finally seems to be coming together with a veteran quarterback in Phillip Rivers at the helm. So that is my take on the AFC South. I hope you guys got some value out of there. Not as many star names, but some good depth pieces, some good value names to know. Stick around after the break. We're going to be going into the final, final division, and that is the AFC West. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen, it's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Thank you for making it this far into the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. We've talked about all the AFC conferences except for one. I hope you guys have gotten some good insight out of what I've been saying and my kind of opinion on these divisions. And now we're going to make our way to the home of the Super Bowl champions, and that's the AFC West. Now we are going to start with the Los Angeles Chargers. An interesting team to unpack here. Who's going to be the quarterback? Are they really going to stick with Tyrod Taylor the whole season? Or is Justin Herbert, first-round pick out of Oregon, going to make his way into the lineup? Because of the unusual circumstances that this year presents itself, I think Tyrod Taylor does remain in that starting spot for a good chunk of the season. 
And I, he could be good, but is there that much fantasy football value with the roster that is around him? I think the only two guys that kind of Warner a high pick in this offense, and that is Keenan Allen, obviously going to be kind of a second to third round pick. He's a number one receiver. The thing is with him that I think is questionable, he had just under 1,200 yards last year, but he just isn't that consistent in my eyes. You never know what you're going to get out of him week in and week out. He can He's kind of a boomer bust type guy, and I don't like to have that in my top picks. So I personally try and avoid Keenan Allen if I can. Now, you look at the running back by committee thing or kind of backfield, Austin Eckler is the guy to have in this offense. Austin Eckler showed what he can do when Melvin Gordon was sitting out last season. And, I mean, he could be a huge, huge get kind of in the middle of the draft. He's someone who is an interesting case because he's a shifty little back, but he also is huge out of the pass game, and that's where he really gets you. So Austin Eckler could be a huge find for say If he's running back to a flex position, he is going to be very productive, one of the more productive fantasy football players in this uh, team or on this team. Justin Jackson is their other running back who could be really good, but I don't know if he's going to get enough carries to kind of garner a fantasy football pick. So that is my opinion. Then you have Hunter Henry at their tight end position. That's another one. I would almost put him over Keenan Allen, which people wouldn't agree with me. Neither of them I hold that high just because of consistency is the big issue with the Chargers for me. So... You know, if you get them at the right spot in the right value, yes, there are some Chargers that are worth it. But you got to know where you're taking these guys because the Chargers, I think, are going to be a very inconsistent team. So we're going to move it on down to the second team, and that is the Denver Broncos. There's some guys that I am surprisingly high on in this team. I mean, starting off with Drew Locke, he showed what he can do at the end of the season when he finally got in, and I think he's the future for this team. I mean, he threw for over a 1,000 yards in maybe four games, if that, maybe four or five. I think he could be very productive now that he gets the full keys to the kind of offense, might you say. Then they have Melvin Gordon, which is an interesting case. He kind of is hurt like just getting old a little bit but I think he's going to be better in this Denver Broncos offense I personally would value him around the four to six round range I think Philip Philip Lindsay is the sleeper kind of similar to Austin Eckler where you could get him a little bit later and he could be a very valuable flex or running back too because he's a shifty little back who can get in and out of the holes as well as put some value in the passing game but the passing game is where this offense is going to excel in their run or receiving core. Cortland Sutton, the, I think, third-year guy out of SMU, yeah, third-year guy, really came on into his own over just over 1,000 yards last year, almost just under 1,200. Um, really a very talented receiver. I think he's going to take that next step with Drew Locke. Kind of build, they build that rapport, and now – those two working together are going to be a great duo. But the other one is Jerry Judy, one of the top receivers in this year's draft. Absolute speedster. And for a guy who has such a strong arm like Drew Locke, I think Jerry Judy is going to be a huge weapon. I would put Jerry Judy over Cortland Sutton. People might call me crazy for that, but call it, I'm calling it here. Jerry Judy might be in that kind of rookie of the year conversation. So, those are my picks within the Denver Broncos offense. Let's move it on down to the Oakland. I'm sorry, not the Oakland, the Las Vegas Raiders. And now this is a team, another team with intriguing, intriguing names. Derek Carr holds a little bit of fantasy value. He's more of someone I would maybe stream or you have a buy. You needed kind of a backup guy. Then yes, that is who I would choose. Derek Carr is a great option, kind of backup guy. But am I, do I want him to be my number one guy the whole season? No, of course not. But Josh Jacobs is going to be the number one guy on this offense. First round draft pick, a running back who could have been the rookie of the year if it weren't for his injury at the end of the year that held him out of the last three or four games and he wanted to go it was the team that chose it wasn't worth it and I think he's going to be an absolute bell cow of a back John Gruden loves to run the ball with his offense so expect Josh Jacobs to be a huge part of this offense and very a top 10 to 15 fantasy football performer now 
The next guy I want to talk about with the Las Vegas Raiders is Henry Ruggs, the rookie receiver, just like Jerry Judy out of Alabama. And I think Henry Ruggs is going to be a monster. One of the most talented receivers we've seen come out of college since Julio Jones. And while he might not look like Julio Jones in his first year, I think he's going to hold some fantasy football value. So expect Henry Ruggs to be the number one guy in this offense. Tyrell Williams also holds some fantasy football value in the Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Las Vegas Raiders offense. Tyrell Williams is a tall reception receiver. They thought he was going to be the number one guy, but I think Henry Ruggs is going to take that over. Now, the other guy who could be kind of a sleeper in a way is Darren Waller, the tight end. And he can really be a great kind of value pick because there's a kind of five or six tight ends who are going to go before him with Mark Andrews, Kittle, Kelsey, Gronkowski, but Darren Waller can produce just like those guys. Darren Waller is a huge part of this offense. John Gruden loves using his tight ends, and I would expect Darren Waller to be right there up there with those sort of tight ends. He's a top eight tight end, if not higher, so that is one that I would keep an eye out for. All in all, the Las Vegas Raiders have a very Very productive fantasy football team. I mean, Josh Jacobs, Tyra Williams, Henry Ruggs, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro could even be kind of a surprise guy at certain times. So Las Vegas Raiders really on the up and up within this NFC or AFC West, but no one is going to top the Kansas City Chiefs. And that's just the gosh darn truth. I mean, Patrick Mahomes signing a absolutely ridiculous deal this offseason well deserved though just like I said with Lamar Jackson he is the only other quarterback that warrants a round one pick and rightfully so I mean throws for practically 4,000 yards every season he's one of the best quarterbacks we've seen in the past 10 years and he is young which is scary so you if your draft the spot lines up in the first round with Patrick Mahomes. Just take him. You will be happy, very happy about that. And now as we move forward, we're going to go to their wide receiver position, Sammy Watkins, McCole Hardman, and Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill, obviously the number one guy, kind of a second to fourth round pick, and he's going to He's going to have those big numbers. That's going to be Patrick Mahomes' number one guy. Gets a lot of deep throws. Just kind of a big play guy. So expect Tyreek Hill to be very productive in fantasy football. And over Sammy Watkins, I'm going to go with McCole Hardman. He kind of was inconsistent last year, but I think he's going to come in to be a very nice wide receiver too behind Tyreek Hill. He is a speedster, but he can also kind of make his way into the middle of the field and find open spots. But now Patrick Mahomes, number one guy in this whole entire offense. And outside of Patrick Mahomes, I think this is the most productive guy. And that's Travis Kelsey, the second best or arguably the best tight end in the NFL. Travis Kelsey is not only his favorite receiver, but his favorite red zone target. And that's where tight ends make their money. I mean, Travis Kelsey is an absolute beast, 6'5". So it just shows you that he could be very productive and he is going to be very productive. He has been for years and years. So Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, main three guys. But here's a name that people, interesting, today, Damian Williams, the starting running back, came out and announced that he was opting out, and that puts rookie Clyde Edwards-Hilaire out of LSU as the number one back, which is a very interesting, interesting thing. And I think he could be a extremely productive running back for this offense and really a top running back in the AFC. So expect him to really boost his fantasy football value and show some teams what he can do there was a reason he was a number one overall draft pick and I would expect him to do great things as he takes over that offense and it's really a good offense to be in with Patrick Mahomes Tyreek Hill um, Travis Kelsey you know there is not a lot of pressure for him to be that number one guy and this is an offense that likes to throw the ball likes to throw the ball deep so teams kind of play that and now you get Patrick Mahomes back there handing it off to him as a number one running back he's going to have holes to run he's going to have spaces to go so it's something to keep in mind as you move closer to your fantasy football drafts Thank you guys so much. I hope you got something out of this. And the AFC West is an interesting division. Denver Broncos have some very good fantasy football players. So do the Las Vegas Raiders. It's really only the Chargers that kind of are 
a little questionable at times, but they still have some good guys. You know, Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, Hunter Henry. You could get some good value out of them. But the Las Vegas Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs are on a different level, especially the Kansas City Chiefs when it comes to this division. They have the kind of horsepower, might you say, as you start dissecting players into your fantasy football drafts and start valuing them in certain spots. So we went over the AFC conference and I hope that was helpful for you guys. There's a lot of good players to keep an eye on for as these fantasy football drafts really inch closer and closer. Thank you guys so much for listening to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. My name is Grady and if you guys have the moment, please I want to ask you to subscribe to the show, write a nice review, that helps us a lot. And if you also have a free little moment, go onto Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and follow us. So Thank you, and that is it from the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Have a great rest of your day. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.